Hi guys, welcome back to another video. Uh, today we're going to be going over some of the items I uh, picked up uh, last weekend. Um, and also into another item which I've uh, had for a while now. Um, I did um, cover it briefly in my sort of tour around uh, the uh, room. I think I did that in another video. Um, I have to double check that, but my mind's going to be a bit thingy. But yeah, so starting off... Um, I've got into a conversation with uh, uh, someone from Ruffin and More channel. Um, so uh, about some items regarding, obviously, he did a recent video on uh, the Maroon Berry um, around sort of the parachute regiment and other uh, uh, personnel who wore it as well. So mainly around about we got a conversation about smocks. So um, uh, <coughs> in answer to that. One of the items I picked up on the weekend was uh, this very, very nice um, Paris mock. Um, this one from the NSN number, from the NATO uh, number, if my mind is, if my memory is correct, I believe it's a, just a pre Falklands one, so around 1980, 79 maybe, but mainly just sort of 1980, 81. So it's pre Falklands made one um, with a second battalion. Uh, flashes on so the blue uh, square and obviously the uh, jump wings on the arm I've been that closer actually so so that's second battalion I believe green was third battalion and red was first battalion as far as my memory uh, memory doesn't deceive me um, on the other arm is a later edition so you have the uh, uh, Union flag flash and the uh, 16th Air Assault Brigade, uh, which was uh, formed in 1999 um, and served in like, um, I guess that's Sierra Leone in Kosovo, I believe, as far as I remember. But yeah, that's a later edition of uh, 1999. Um, but um, it's a really, really nice one. So the knitted cuffs were still an issue and still are now, even onto the MTP um, smocks. If you could just see maybe the contract number. I think it's actually very, very dark. I'll have to do maybe a separate screenshot, a separate photo um, of the um, NSN number um, for you to get a bit of more of a, a thing in it. But yeah, it's honestly, generally British Army parachute smocks have always been very, very well made. <coughs> Excuse me. Ever since the Denison's, um, I find they're a very, very nice little garment. Um, okay, so go through the little uh, bits on the, ja on the jacket. So you have two large... Uh, Upper breast pockets slanted for easy access, so from hand to hand to go over into anything, and you can, they they're billowed as well, so you can get a lot of stuff in there. And the uh, same with the uh, bottom ones as well; they're billowed as well. They um, are closed by snaps, so large snaps, quite uh, very good. Um, on the arms, you have sort of. Uh, I think one, I think this one's the dressing pocket as far as I remember, the one with the button. I, the other one, I can't remember, probably just like a utility pocket for like pens, etc. I can't exactly remember. Um, some of you guys in the comments will probably correct me on that. Thank you very much. Um, securing the front, uh, there's no um, poppers or anything, it's just one large zip all the way down. Um, like all Parasmocks, um, it has a undercarriage uh, support. So like for when you jump out the aircraft, it, your smock doesn't billow up and get all over your equipment. So basically this is to uh, for this flap at the back to come round underneath your um, your uh, safe parts, I should say. Um, and then to secure it to the front, stop it billowing up. Obviously when you've got, you've got your equipment on and then your um, jump gear, etc. Um, so yeah, let's turn it around quickly. As I said on the back, you have the flap for thing, and it's a it's a lovely, lovely pe made um, piece. Um, I showed another smock um, <coughs> I picked up the weekend previous to this, um, previous to picking up this one actually. Um, another video which I believe is a later edition one. I said it's sort of um, late eighties to a very early nineties. Um, issue one. The uh, cuffs are a lot darker. The label is more of sort of a plastic um, style, which is quite worn actually, quite a lot as well actually. It's still it's still nice, but uh, I definitely prefer this one over that. Um, so yeah, 
So possibly this might have been issued um, to a guy who served in the Falklands, I'm not too sure. Especially considering maybe because it was 2nd Battalion who, who were out in the Falklands um, with uh, 3rd Commander Brigade um, along with 3rd Battalion. Um, but also this guy definitely served in the uh, very, very late 90s into the 2000s, obviously with a 16 Aerosol Brigade. Okay, so it has attachments for a hood. So three buttons on the back of the on the uh, underside of the collar um, for attachment of a hood or other items of that sort. And it's it's a very very good item as well and warm as well. Um, there's no like proper light. Up. I'll open it up and then we can have a look. There is a there is sort of a uh, sort of the nice sort of standard liner that they would usually do with um, items of this period. But it's not like a one. It's not like a thick liner, but it's it's a Fairly thin garment, but it's it's windproof. I would say it's probably its best um, thing going for it. Has uh, ties in the middle to secure it better to the waist, and a large um, back pocket as well in the inside of the jacket. I think I think it's um, I can't remember the exact name for it, but there is a name for the uh, type of um, pocket this is. I think it's like a map pocket or something. Like that. I'm not entirely sure. Please correct me on this, but I've. My mind's gone blank on the actual terminology, but yeah, really, really nice label. Slightly faded, but still clear enough to read. So as I said, I'll do a photo um, before or after the video, um, probably after actually, uh, um, with a much more closer look on that. So yeah, so that's that. Um, I'll quickly pause the video and then we'll go over to uh, the second item. <coughs> Excuse me. So this is the second item I picked up on the weekend. So this is a uh, if. Some of you might already know what it is already. So this is a uh, number seven um, Liam for bayonet for the uh, number one Mark Four and the, the number one Mark Four. Um, sorry, sorry, correction. The number four Mark One and the number four Mark Two. Sorry about that. I'm getting into the bayonet sort of thing. So yeah, so number um, seven. Um, very, very, very short lived um, for a couple of reasons. Um, it was. Great, right? It's great as a fighting knife. I give it that because the handle itself and the grip is very nice and large, and it gives you a nice grip on the hand as a fighting knife. But as a bayonet, it's basically useless because basically they took the um, attributes from the number um, number five um, jungle carbines bayonet with the large O-ring, which would uh, fit on the over the large flash hider on number five. And sort of the handle and everything, the Bowie blade, etc. But because the way the number four um, rifle and the uh, Mark V Sten, which you would always also fit as well, fit fitted onto the weapon, you would have about that much, basically from the end of the uh, fitting to the to the uh, um, to the O-ring, you would have about two and a half inches of just space. Um, and considering the barrel, where it would sit, um, would basically just be only slightly above the um, the clip to uh, move the uh, fitting over. So it it was basically more of a hazard to the shooter than it was to the guy you were shooting at. Um, so yeah, but it's, again, it's a lovely, lovely bayonet. They made about 100,000 or so of these. Um, getting very, very rare these days. I actually got quite a good um, deal on this, I must say. But yeah. Lovely bayonet, um, sadly obviously short lived but uh, still a really, really nice piece. So I'll show you, so it has a clip on the back here, just see, so it just got the bad lighting, so there we go. So clip on the back here, you push that forward and the uh, the bottom section flicks around and clicks. And then you have the fixture for the number four um, rifle, so I'll keep going that shot, for the number four rifle and the uh, Mark V Sten. Um, so yeah, as you can see, where it sits, the um, the latch kind of almost acts almost acts like a ramp um, when you fire the rifle or the uh, or the sten um, into this O-ring, which was useless basically. Yes, as it's good when it's in its fighting sort of knife sort of mode in a way to keep us a good uh, cross guard, but um, in the use of the rifle itself. It was just useless. If this was more flatter, 
this um, latch or even on the other side it might have worked a bit better and basically just cutting off the top of this o-ring would have done it well but um, they didn't they kept it for some reason don't know why but yeah I think it's just because of just use um, uh, basically just parts wise it was easier to just to manufacture it like this than changing the design etc from the uh, number 5 Joker carbine bayonet but yeah still a lovely, lovely bayonet the uh, bow blade is very very similar to what they would use on the number nine, which basically replaced this very, very quickly. Um, basically almost had like only a year in service, I believe. But yeah, the number nine replaced it, which was basically this fixture with just the bow blade um, welded or just attached straight onto the um, the number four uh, fixture, which was a great banner. I'll have to get one of those soon. They are getting up in price now. Um, you mostly see those around the uh, 50s into the 60s with the uh, bow blade. Um, uh, they're very, very nice bayonet, especially with um, guys in Korea or um, guys on ceremony duties um, in London as well. You'll see those a lot. Okay, um, and then obviously the bow blade design was carried over to the SLR um, with the uh, L1, A1 bayonet and the L1, A2. I might be wrong with that designation, but yeah. So that's that. That's one of the items I picked up. And the scabbard is basically very much similar to the um, SLR, but yeah, as I said... Very, very nice bayonet, and these bayonets only fit in one way, and if you try to force them any other way, they won't go. So, if I just click that back actually quickly. So again, the same thing to get the uh, the locking uh, piece down. Push the latch forward, and then that should just turn around and click into place. Very, very nice and simple. It's, it's a love, it's beautifully made. They're beautifully made. They're probably one of the best number fours they have, number four bayonets they made. But just, um... Thought was there, but the idea was a bit flawed in a way, but yeah. So the, the bayonet only goes in one way, so you have the um, lug for the uh, for the uh, scabbard facing out, so facing outwards, that facing down, so blade facing that way, and it should just slip in like that, and just slice in, it's very, very simple. Try to force it the other way, it won't go, and you'll have a hard time getting it out. Okay, so I'm going to pause the video here again, and then we're going to go into the, the last item where I sort of... Um, penultimate item um, that I, well, the last item I picked up and then we're going to go to an item I've had for a while, okay? And now we're back again. <coughs> <coughs> oh, excuse me. Sorry, my takes are a bit thingy today. Okay. Um, sorry, you've already seen it now. You can probably guess what it is. It's a uh, paratrooper helmet, so Second World War. Um, this, one is, this one is a reproduction, but it's a very, very good one. And it's been aged very, very well, and um, it's, I believe, it's one of the Pegasus military ones. So, um, very, very difficult to get these days. They're still doing these certain ones, but the other ones are doing, are a bit, I think, out of stock at the moment. <clears throat> but I would say it's sort of one of the better ones on the market. This one is of the Mark I type. So, with the uh, leather, leather um, straps, with the cup. Sort of leather inside with the sort of inside the buckle attachments. It's the slightly later strap design because it's uh, riveted, with sort of pinned riveted. If you see there, should I get that in the light? Sorry. Um, there we go. There we go. Sorry. Pin riveted there instead of sewn like some of the earlier ones were, which even though it's still a nice one though, and it has the fiber rim that goes round. So if I show you on here. Um, so there's a rim on the side here, there's a fibre rim that goes all the way around, and this one is fibre itself, the rim, <coughs> unlike the, um, I think the SOF ones, the Soldier of Fortune ones, with the rims, um, are steel rims, I believe, I can't remember, but yeah, the liner itself, I think someone's gone at this with a bit of paint, but um, it's a bit of a shame, but uh, it's, it's still nice though, so there's the liner itself, very, very nice made one. Really, really good um, reproduction, I would say. Um, very, very close, even with the uh, pad on the top as well. So if you just see the light. But yeah, oh, right, you can't really see. Uh, again, I'll, I'll put some pictures up, um, closer pictures of each item, so you don't have to worry about the lighting on the video, etc. But so, there'll be closer pictures of each individual thing. So yeah, it has a large um, soft pad on the top. So if, say, you have a hit to the, hit to the top of the helmet, your cushions um, from anything from above. 
Um, on the liner, you have uh, the dates on the liner, even though it's a reproduction, I believe. Yeah, it's a reproduction, so. Uh, BMD 1942. Again, um, pictures at the end of the video, so yeah. But yeah, it's 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 really really nice, really really nicely done. It sort of has sort of a, a coat of um, a strange uh, green blackish uh, paint to the actual shell itself, and then with the net and the scrim, it's, it 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 does really really look the part, especially for the period. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, that wasn't too bad a price either. It was because um, I think they sell for about. 150, 160 on their Pegasus website themselves, and I think they still have them in stock actually. Um, and I got it for just less than that. Um, so yeah, um, so yeah, that's that item. And then we're going to the uh, the last one I'm going to show, which is not what I picked up at the weekend, but I've had for a while now. Um, I think I think I got it off. I can't remember. I think I got it off eBay, as far as I remember, for quite a good price. And and honestly, it's um, it's a great great piece of kit. And uh, okay. So we're going to the next one. See you in a bit. Hi, back in. Okay, so this is the uh, Magro uh, sporting jacket or sporting vest. Um, basically, as a private purchase item uh, from any sort of uh, sports shop or um, surplus place, basically. This one was used by a girl called uh, Hughes. Uh, I've got on the uh, which is written on the back of the thing. But yeah, basically, it's in a sixty. 68 DPM, uh, DPM colouring and uh, style with the uh, camouflage pattern on it, which is really, really nice, especially for the period. It has this nice, really, really nice nylon trim to the jacket to sort of reinforce each of the areas so it doesn't tear. The only area it doesn't have it is on the um, sleeves themselves, obviously for rubbing wise, but everywhere else it's sort of on there for the, um, even the inside of the small pockets. So, and all, all, all of it's fastened, so the main fastening is the zip, a very, very heavy duty black zip at the front, which is really, really nice. And then all the others uh, are snaps on each of the pockets. So, as I said, so all the, all the pockets have the nylon trim at the top for reinforcing. You have two large pockets at the front, very, very good for, say, large magazines. Uh, for, they fit SLR magazines really, really well, actually, as well. I've managed to, f I can fit about four SLR magazines into one, and the way it sags actually, when it goes in, it doesn't actually, it's not actually too bad actually, it keeps upright, it doesn't just droop all the way down, it keeps them upright, and I think because, because of the nylon trim, um, it actually supports it very, very well, on the, uh, on the actual body, and they will fit uh, M16 magazines perfectly as well, so as a patrol vest, especially for Northern Ireland, which probably is where you'll probably see one of these, um, it's very very good. Um, the slender pockets at the top, um, they're okay for um, pistol magazines for like a like a Browning or something like that. But um, I think very very good for uh, any like small grenades and especially for like thunder flashes and things. Like that actually, would be very very good for that. Um, or any other items like small items, uh, pens or anything you'll need for anything like that. Large pockets on the side, I think good for maybe like a bottle, a water bottle in one side and maybe some extra magazines or um, grenades or something in one side. So that's that, that's all on the front, you can see, and then you have a um, dressing pocket at the top. I have a dressing here at the moment, you could use it for anything else though, anything really you wanted though. But I think a dressing pocket, probably very, very good um, near the shoulder. Like on some other like on some other things you'll see attached to the 58 webbing uh, normally a dressing or something of that sort of nature. Okay, moving round, we'll spin it round. On the back you have one large um, pack on the packet on the uh, pouch on the back, which you know, I would say is very very good for a radio, uh, especially for like um, uh, uh, rural patrol in Northern Ireland for a uh, 349 or a uh, man pack. It fits very very comfortably in there and it holds the it holds the weight very very well. Again it's uh, Got that nice nylon lining on it. Um, if I open it all the way up, actually, it billows out quite far, so you, you can get a lot in there. Um, and it's I say with the um, the three four nines is probably the best bet to go in here. So it's not sitting on your front. It can sit on the back, and the aerial comes straight out the side of the pocket. And it's all again, it's all snaps. 
and it, it sits very very comfortable and with there's a thick there's quite a good thickness on the jack on the um vest it's excuse me, quite a good fitness on the vest itself so it's quite well padded so it's not too it's not uncomfortable at all as well when you're wearing it and generally because you're wearing it over um your smock in general um it's it's very very comfortable a lot more comfortable and a lot less um weight bearing say then uh well weight um weight wearing I should say uh, than say um, standard 58 webbing or anything along the lines or even like the um, uh, later assault vests um, with the mesh in that I would say this is probably better because it sits you more nice and because it's it's basically the same material as um, your issue jacket etc it keeps you warmer as well it keeps you very very nice and warm especially for those cold days in in um, Northern Ireland and near and in bandit country it's very very good at the back, there is a uh, tie strap, nylon tie strap to uh, adjust the uh, the um, vest to your body, which is really, really good. At the moment, it's uh, a perfect thing for me. Um, I'll try and do some photos as well of uh, myself um, wearing the item with a uh, smock on, if need be. Maybe in a, maybe this video or a later video when I get the chance um, to show you how it's sort of worn and how it sort of sits. But yeah, it's a very ex extremely really nice item. If you're able to get your hands on one, I would really suggest it. Um, the company is Magro, so if I bring it over here, there you go. So uh, Magro, uh, another quality art product of Magro um, Sports. So Magro Sports, and then you have the uh, contract number and the address of the uh, place it's made. Again, I'll do photos at the end of the video of uh, closer ones of this. If I just open the item up, up actually, I'll just uh, unzip it here. All green inside. There's no fanciness inside, but it's it's extremely well made. It's very very nice and thick, especially where the pockets are as well. It adds sort of an extra layer, and where the large pocket is on the back, it adds like another layer or so, so it keeps your back nice and warm. And it's all secured at the bottom with a pull pull elastic, so pull ties at the bottom as well with the cords, pull cords. There you go. Okay, so. Thank you for um, joining me in another video. Um, I'll hopefully hopefully have another one up within a few week, uh, about a week or so. Um, it all depends with my work, etc. But um, thank you so much for joining me. And uh, if you've got any questions and comments, even down below, um, I'll put some other links to um, uh, the uh, Facebook um, uh, Facebook page as well. Um, I think I've mentioned it in other videos before, so um, British Army is Century at War, put that in there, along with other photos, actually, actually yeah, I'll put the photos of myself in some of the items I've shown um, on that page for you to view if you wish, and um, so yeah, as I said again, like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you later.